Hey YouTube, this is Craig from Sweet Digital Productions. In this video I'd like to show you a technique in Logic Pro X that you might use for a couple different purposes. For various reasons, a Logic Project file may, in rare occasions, become corrupted. When this happens, you might see or hear some unexpected behaviors when working in the project. In this case, it could be your only solution is to rebuild the project. This video will show you how to do that. This technique can also be used to add individual components from one project to another. These components might be individual tracks and their audio or software instrument regions. Or they might be just the plugins and their corresponding channel strips. You can also import only the project settings from another Logic project. This will become quite clear as you move through this video. The rebuild or import process in Logic Pro X is pretty much identical to the way it's done in Logic 9. So for those version 9 users, this should also be helpful. So let's get started. I have created a new project with a single audio track that I will remove later. Remember, a project cannot be created without at least one track. There are a few different ways to access the track import view. This is just the way that I find most comfortable. I want to find the logic project that contains the components that I need for rebuilding a project or for importing into an existing working project. So I will click on the browser's button on the right hand side of the control bar. This icon may be familiar to you as the media button in other Apple applications. Then I will choose the all files tab and navigate to the folder that contains my project. Some shortcut buttons under the tab headings may help you to more quickly find your project. I will choose the home button and navigate to my desktop where I have a folder that contains the project that I would like to rebuild in its entirety. The blue colored buttons along the top of the track import view determine what I will see in the panel. As you can see, by toggling each of the buttons on or off, I can filter the tracks in view. In the case of this project, I have only software instruments as it's designed for playback on MIDI devices. So I have no audio tracks. I'm going to resize the panel view so that I can better see all of the components of each track. The checkboxes beside each of the tracks will be active only if there is data associated with each of the column labels, such as content, plugins, auxiliary sends, I.O., and automation. If I need only to select data from specific tracks, I can select the track I need, then press the right arrow key to select all components for that track. I can also deselect all track components by pressing the left arrow key. If I need to select components for all tracks, I can choose Edit, Select All, or use key command, Command A, to select all tracks. Then, press the right arrow key to select all active checkboxes that indicate there is data. You can see in this example that there are auxiliary sends on tracks 9 and 10, and there is automation on track 8. I will also select all of the global tracks to ensure I import my markers, signature, and tempo. Once you have selected all relevant components for import, you can click Add in the bottom right corner of the track import view. The final step of my project rebuild process is to click on the Import Project Settings button. Then make sure I select the appropriate category where I have modified the defaults. Now I will inspect the project to ensure all regions that I need have been added to the tracks area and to the channel strips. The regions are all there. Sends have been added to tracks 9 and 10. The automation is there for track 8. My markers are on the marker track and the tempo information has been updated to reflect the imported project. To complete this exercise, I will delete the initial empty audio track and save the project accordingly. I hope this tutorial has been helpful for you. 
Again, my name is Craig from Sweet Digital Productions. Until next time, good luck with your audio projects.